This is breaking news from KSL. His life, I think, is a legacy of service. Wherever he was, he served. This morning, we remember the life and the legacy of President Thomas S. Monson, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, announcing his death late last night. President Monson passed away at 10.01 p.m. on Tuesday in his home in Salt Lake City. He was surrounded by family at that time. He was 90 years old. Now, we want to get right out to new special Sam Penrod. He is live at church headquarters for us this morning as we remember the life of President Monson. And Sam, you have covered the church for years now, certainly news being felt around the world this morning. Absolutely. Not just here at church headquarters, but there is sadness uh, throughout the world for Latter-day Saints as they are waking up this morning to hear of the passing of President Monson. It was announced by the church just before midnight. President Monson has served nearly 10 years as president of the church. He was sustained in uh, February of 2008, but his legacy of service in the church dates back to October of 1963. That's when he was called as an apostle, and his service took him around the globe as he ministered to church members in his calling. In 1985, he was called to be a member of the First Presidency, serving as a counselor to Presidents Ezra Taft Benson, Howard W. Hunter, and Gordon B. Hinckley before becoming president of the church 10 years ago. As church president, President Monson continued the church's focus on building new temples, and then his announcement five years ago of the missionary age change that allowed uh, young men and young women to serve earlier uh, dramatically increased the number of missionaries in the church. And then, of course, his contributions over what was more than a half century of service as a church leader will be remembered by Latter-day Saints in a variety of ways, uh, certainly from helping the church grow and be reestablished in Germany to his support and encouragement of the scouting program uh, for young men in the church. And then, most importantly, the attention that he gave to individuals, uh, particularly uh, beginning with the widows that he served as a young bishop in Salt Lake City, and then to others he knew and loved who were in need of help over the years. Uh, he made many visits to hospitals and nursing homes to reach out to those who he need, knew needed uh, to be lifted. The LDS Church did release some videotaped statements overnight from both of President Monson's counselors. The hallmark will be the individual concern, like the Savior going out to the, the poor, the sick, whoever, and uh, and worldwide. The fact that he had, he loved Samoa, he loved the saints in Germany, he loved he loved all across the world people. They loved him, by the way, <laughs> and they felt that. But I think that'll be left. The idea of, I think it's more than the individual. It's all individuals. Well, Mrs friendship. I'll miss him as a friend, as one uh, who can be trusted, one who was very kind, very generous, uh, very caring, loving. He will be remembered as a prophet who uh, moved the church forward through his example. He lived what he preached. He was a man of the people and a man of God. And this combination was just uh, wonderful for our time. It was just right. President Monson's biography is entitled To the Rescue, and that is what his legacy will be. In fact, in September, as the uh, church leaders, uh, members of the First Presidency, traveled to uh, the hurricane areas, uh, President Eyring went to Florida and President Uchtdorf went to Houston. In both their comments to church members that they met with and also in interviews that I did with them, they both said, we are here representing President Monson. This is where he would want to be if he could be here ministering to these people who have gone through so much. And so I think certainly uh, for Latter-day Saints, that is what he will be remembered most for is reaching out and helping the individual. And Sam, we just had Pamela Atkinson on just a few moments ago, and she kind of described him as a gentle giant who loved everyone. I think uh, that goes along with what you just talked about. Yes, and uh, he loved everyone, uh, not just members of the church, but he had a lot of uh, special friends from the community here in Salt Lake City and others that he met throughout the world. Well, speaking of the world, Sam, you know, in his first two years as uh, president of the church, he dedicated 10 new temples. Explain to us the growth and the impact he had on the growth of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
I think primarily it came uh, through the mission age change, which has helped uh, the church grow around the world, and certainly uh, his connections uh, traveling as an apostle uh, to many countries around the world. We have to remember back when he was first called at the young age of 36 that other members of the quorum were in their 60s and 70s, and so he was really relied on a lot to do a lot of that international travel, which at that time was much more difficult to do. And then again, uh, here about five or six years ago, he had a, a special love for the people in Germany because he spent so much time there traveling back there and uh, visiting with many uh, of the friends and acquaintances and church members that he had made over the years in Germany when he was church president. And so his influence is felt well beyond here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, and that's a good point. As you talk about him traveling other places, we live in a day and age where you think of with President Trump, the president of the United States, everything he does is documented. There's a camera on him. We see everything he's doing every time. It was different with President Monson um, over the years before he was even prophet of the church. As you talked about him traveling, so many things that he did seemed to just go under the radar, and he would have it that way. He wouldn't want everyone to know, but those people, as we talk about individuals, the individuals who are affected they know those stories, and I'm sure they tell some of those stories. Yes, his service was always very quiet, but there are people throughout the church, if they didn't have any interaction with him, they'll have stories that their parents or grandparents had as uh, he met with them, uh, whether it was in a state conference or individually uh, for many decades, I mean, more than a half century of service. Right. He served the collective, but really touched the individual. Certainly did. Sam Penrod live for us this morning. Uh, on Temple Square. Sam, thank you. Stick around. We'll check back with you a little bit later throughout the